What's up everybody, Andy Drifter here and thank you for tuning in. Today will be part four of some of my favorite autographs from my collection. This is gonna be some more Comic-Con items, hence the uh, Super Mario Brothers shirt that I got on. Uh, I didn't realize as I was going through my collection that I had such an abundance of Comic-Con autograph related items. So I hope you enjoy this video and uh, away we go. First up is an autographed eight by 10 by Paul Rubens, most famously known for playing Pee-wee Herman. Pee-wee's Playhouse ran from 1986 to 1990. Pee-wee's Big Adventure came out actually before the TV show. That was released in 1985. I'm 42 years old, and I can't tell you how many times I watched that when I was a kid. I was a, uh, a weekly watcher of the show as well. Pee-wee's Playhouse was quite pivotal in the sense that it helped launch the careers of Lawrence Fishburne as well as S. E. Patham Berkerson. Uh, if you're not familiar with that last name, she played Lieutenant Van Buren on Law and Order for many years. She also starred in, well, not starred, but she had a role in Terminator 2. Rubens has had many film roles as well as TV roles. He had a nice little cameo in Everybody Loves Raymond. He played a wacky comic book store owner. Raymond was on the hunt for a certain card for his daughter. He stumbles into the store. The back and forth between these two is pure gold. He also starred in Blow, which was released in 2000, starring Johnny Depp. Real-life accounts of cocaine trafficker George Young, who passed away last year. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Great flick. I got to meet Rubens at a Comic-Con in Phoenix three years ago. He's a little bit reserved, but I got a chance to tell him how much I enjoyed watching his show as a kid. He makes a few appearances from time to time. He's not that hard to get. Uh, at some point, I will get this authenticated. But there you have it. Autograph 8x10 by Paul Rubens, a.k.a. Pee Wee Herman. You are now looking at Seasons 1 and 2 of Cobra Kai on DVD. The cover signed by Martin Cove, who plays Sensei John Kreese on the series. Season 1 first started out in 2018 on YouTube. Turned out to be a big hit. And it was later picked up by Netflix. I got a chance to meet him last September at a Comic-Con in Lexington, Kentucky. Great guy, very humble and down-to-earth. And he is a true martial artist. He has a black belt in Okinawa Te, And he has practiced uh, other forms of martial arts as well. If you ever get a chance, check out 2019's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with Leonardo DiCaprio. Crease uh, has, or I'm sorry, Cove has a supporting role in that film. Very entertaining. My only regret is using Silver Sharpie on this uh, signature here. I mentioned in one of my earlier videos that I am not a fan of Silver Sharpie, but at the time, uh, I thought it would be the best. Uh, it could have turned out better. But, hey... I got a chance to meet him. The Karate Kid movies were some of my favorite flicks as a kid. As you can see on the bottom right-hand corner, it is JSA certified. And it does have all four discs uh, included inside. So I think this is a pretty nice collector's piece, uh, especially for those that are fans of this uh, show Cobra Kai I believe they are now going into season four. I have intermittently watched a few episodes, and for what I've seen, I really like. I've yet to watch a full season in its entirety. I don't really get a chance to binge watch a whole lot of shows. Uh, maybe one day I will. But there you have it. Uh, seasons one and two of Cobra Kai. The cover signed by uh, Martin Cove. Next up is a signed copy of Napoleon Dynamite by John Heater. 
I got a chance to meet him in 2018 in Buffalo, New York at another Comic-Con. Napoleon Dynamite was released in 2004. It was made on a modest budget of $400,000. It had a limited theatrical release, but uh, it started growing buzz, released into more theaters, and it eventually made $45 million. Pretty nice turnaround for the studio. Little known fact is that uh, Heater was only paid $1,000 for his role as Napoleon Dynamite, which was his first film role. But in a nice turn of events, after the theatrical success of the movie, the studio doubled back and gave him a undisclosed nice little bonus for his role in the film. When I first saw this in the theater, I, I didn't really get it. It was one of those movies for me that I had to watch a couple of times to sort of get the humor. I don't think it was a fantastic comedy, but a good one to each his own. John Heater went on to star in several other comedies. I did like The Bench Warmers and Blades of Glory. He's one of the nicest guys you ever want to meet. I got a chance to speak with him at length at this Comic-Con. You know, you always hear these stories uh, at the time, especially that there might be a Napoleon Dynamite 2. And he said, absolutely not. He was done with acting. Some films are better left alone. And I think this is one of them. I don't think there was any need for a sequel. Of course, it would be a big hit. Should he have a change of heart and want to do a sequel and return to acting? I don't see it happening. But there it is. Uh, Napoleon Dynamite, signed by John Heater. As you can see on the upper right-hand corner, it is authenticated by Beckett. And just like Cobra Kai, this one has the DVD intact as well. There it is. Now you are looking at an autographed 8x10 movie poster from the film Machete, signed by the one and only Danny Trejo. I had the pleasure of meeting him at a horror con in Las Vegas two years ago. Trejo's life story is one of a kind. If you ever get the chance, check out the interview he did on Vlad TV, where he really goes in depth about his life story. It truly is amazing. I'll give you the truncated version here. Uh, unfortunately, he spent some time in the California prison system. Got out, changed his life around. He was working with uh, drug offenders, counseling them and so forth. An inmate that he had done time with by the name of Eddie Bunker went on to become a successful screenplay writer and crime novel author. He had wrote the script for a film called Runaway Train, starring John Voight and Eric Roberts. And uh, it was being filmed in California. Treo, uh, Bunker got Treo a role as an extra. Part of his duties was training Eric Roberts. Uh, I believe there were some fight scenes in the movie. I've never seen it. But uh, there were some fight scenes in the movie. And Treo's job was to help make Eric Roberts' fighting style look more realistic. The director took a liking to Treo, and he went from being an extra to actually having a, uh, a role in the film. I believe uh, he was being paid somewhere around $350 a day, which was quite a bit of money by 1985 standards. And after that, uh, he was off to the races, just film after film after film, over 150 film credits. He's been on several TV shows as well. He's got Treo's Taco Stands in California. Delicious food. He makes a few appearances from time to time as well. Uh, as you can see, I got this 8x10 personalized. It is authenticated by JSA. I was really psyched to, to get this one. Uh, two of my favorite films of all time are Desperado and Heat. Uh, he had pivotal roles in both movies. 
Uh, you know, I consider him to be a mainstream actor, but the only leading role that he's ever had, to my knowledge, is Machete. But uh, he's got uh, a recognizable face as well as a recognizable voice. He's done plenty of voiceover work as well. So there it is, an autographed 8x10 Machete poster of the one and only Danny Trejo. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please hit the like button and the subscribe button, and I will see you again in my next video.